got a customer named Alex. He's been waiting a long time on a knife. Hey everybody, meet Alex. See by his shirt there, he's amped, hyped, and psyched. It's the proper attitude for a knife build. Anyway, hey Alex, come on, let's go build a knife. Hey Alex, you're gonna stick around for a while, right? All right, Alex, well, so where them scissors go? Oh, I got scissors here somewhere in all this. Well, heck. Hey, you know what? I got a better idea. Come on, Alex. Ah, it's going to be brave here, Alex. This might get a little dicey. Not too bad. All right, Alex, you sure you're cut out for this? Last year, uh, Alex here came to my shop and he looked at a bunch of my knives and a bunch of my patterns. And you know, like everybody at first, you kind of gravitate toward those great big old knives. But after we talked about it for a while, we agreed that this was probably what he needed. This is my little caper. It's got a nice finger choil, got a nice thumb groove there. It lets you hold it in a variety of positions. It's really nice for small game and even large game. A lot of times a big knife is uh, more of a hindrance than you think. And, and this pattern, it's a companion to uh, the, big, the big hunter I make, Big Skinner. You ready? Let's go. Okay, Alex, I think the steel we're going to use is called AEBL. It's made in Sweden. Take a scribe, make a really good mark on there. Okay, Alex, this is my little bandsaw. Hey, it's got its own video on YouTube. Have you ever seen it? That's close enough. We'll go to the uh, grinder and finish her up. So Alex, this is my uh, belt grinder. It's been in a couple of my videos. You seen those? Uh, boy, watch it. Gotta keep my eye on you. All right, Alex, we're gonna do a little profiling. Now I know they'll tell you profiling's not politically correct. Yeah, we're getting pretty close. I'm going to throw my small wheel attachment on to get this little inside curve. Well, Alex, yeah, have you seen the video about my uh, small wheel attachment I made? It's got a pretty bad burr on it from profiling. So we're going to go back to the uh, flat platen, which has a ceramic glass liner. Did you see my video on that? Okay, time for a little bit of layout here. We gotta mark our holes. Take a scribe. I'm gonna center punch those. On my bench I use this big old uh, hockey puck. It's one of these southern hockey pucks. This is steel, half inch steel. I heard some of you, uh, some of you guys up north like these little rubber ones. 
We also need to scribe the center line, which I'm going to use a drill bit. Let's go drill some holes. I like putting a little chamfer on there too, just to break those sharp corners. I like to go ahead and kind of plan where my grinds are going to end up. Cheap calipers. If those lines aren't set in stone, but it gives you something to shoot for. I usually go ahead and draw my plunge line in there too. Find you a straight edge. I'll probably put a uh, small sharpening choil in right there. And probably put my start of my plunges, something like that. You see that? Hey, Alex, can you see that? Where'd that boy go? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, let me guess. You were just checking out that brooch I made there. Hmm. All right. We back on track, Alex? Come on, man. This is a uh, file guide. Homemade. Pretty easy little tool to make. I kind of like using it when I'm grinding uh, bevels here lately. It lets you pick a precise angle there and it gives you a really nice place to stop your grind so they match side to side. I use it a lot on my pre-heat treat grinds just so I don't have to think about grinding so much I can just get after it and hog some material off. Alright we'll start our grinding off with a 50 grit ceramic. Hey Alex, uh, did you see my video on these belt holders? Now there's a preheat treat grind up to 220. Not too bad. You know, I think it needs a little bit of a top swedge. I don't know. I usually do a little bit of hand work on mine. I mean, because we all know how fun hand sanding is, right? Alright Alex, to start that hand finishing process, you gotta have a vise. You, um, you've seen my video on this, right? Yeah, I've got some threaded inserts there in my bench so I can get this thing out of my way when I don't need it. So we'll mount our knife in there and with sandpaper and various different shaped objects will clean this thing up a little bit.
know, Alex, that knife's kind of heavy in the rear end. We may have to find an expert for some advice. That's more like it. All right, next up, Alex, heat treat. This is where we take this ridiculously overpriced stainless steel foil and we make a little pouch with it. This is going to protect the stainless steel from the oxygen, keep it from uh, Keep it from getting scared and other bad things. As a matter of habit, I always put my cutting edge towards the fold. That way, while I'm handling it, I always know where the knife is inside of there. Alex, I've got this thing programmed. It's going to heat up to a melt your face off temperature. And then we'll quench it. Our blade is almost at temp. So in the meantime, we're going to get this ready. This is another step in the quenching process. It's kind of a cryo treatment. You can use alcohol or acetone. Acetone actually gets yeah, just a few degrees colder. But what we're making here is a slurry of dry ice and a liquid. We're going to continue that cooling process by going into our cryo bath. Man, I'm stuck. All right, into the cryo. If you're wondering how cold that is, I got a thermocouple stuck in there. About minus. 110, 111 Fahrenheit. I've done this before and had to get down to right at one, minus 120. So I think the specs for AEBL only require like a minus 90 or minus 95. So we're well below the target temp. Okay, we went from melt your face off hot. To freeze your rear off cold, which gives us a really hard blade. It's too hard. We gotta warm it up a little. It's called tempering. So now we go to the little oven, and the perfect temperature is chocolate chip. Two hours. Alright, heat treat's done, and since this video is getting kind of long, I went ahead and did some finish work on there. Up next is handles, and but you know what? Before I put handles on there, I think I'll go ahead and put my maker's mark on. Now we're going to etch this on there. These are some stencils. You see, you can see a light through there. It's kind of like a, a stencil they use for screen printing a shirt. And we're using this uh, electrolyte from a USA Knife Maker. So just got some ordinary felt. I'm going to dampen it into that electrolyte. 
not too much. Now we're going to use electricity to mark this. I'm actually clamping the positive onto the knife and then the negative is connected through this carbon brush piece of felt. Got the electrolyte damp with electrolyte. When I touch it to, to there, electricity is going to go through this knife and it's going to eat away at that metal underneath that stencil. You see the little bubbles? That shows you that it's eating, eating away there. I hold it down for about five seconds and let off. We'll do this for several cycles. And good old fashioned Windex to neutralize the electrolyte. But we don't want to get any more scratches or anything on this part of the blade, so we're going to wrap that up, kind of protect it while we start working on our handles. My experience has told me that young fellers and gals don't always take care of their knife the way they should. So that's one of the reasons I chose a stainless steel for you. Shouldn't have to worry so much about it rusting. And then for the scales, we could use wood or some other things. But again, I think probably the toughest long-term handle material is going to be a man-made material. Like this stuff here. This is G10. It's kind of a fiberglass type product. I was talking to your girlfriend the other day. She said you kind of had a thing for blue. That G10 has a, some black layers in there. It's going to look pretty cool. You see that little uh, shelf in there? I put that in there with a stepped drill bit. And these little Corby fasteners use that little step in there recess and locks it in there. Once we're all glued up we grind the heads off those screws. Alright Alex you sit there and practice your forging. I'm gonna work on the glue up here. I use a slow curing real high quality uh, epoxy. This is by West G Flex by West System. That five minute stuff will get you in trouble. All right, Alex, whenever you're at the doctor's office, do not steal rubber gloves when they're not looking. Then you end up with this funny color. It's really cold in the shop, so I'll have to take this in the house overnight so it fully cures. The next day. Our epoxy is set. Clamps are glued. Jeez, that one don't want to come off. Some good glue. Ah, there it goes. Yeah, this G10 makes some pretty nasty grinding dust. We don't want to breathe that. H have you seen the video on my homemade respirator? Well, we're getting close now. Went as far as I could on the belt center. I did a little bit of hand finishing on there. Now we're gonna put a little shine to it. But we are almost done. Check that out.
did almost all of our sharpening over on the grinder. This is called a strop, a leather strop. It's got two sides on there. Good job, boy! Here, stick your arm out. Let's see if it'll shave. Oh, all right. We'll use mine. Whoa, look at that. That thing's a razor. Boy, that right there is a deer skinning machine. Whew. You're going to have to be careful with this thing. All right, Alex, this video was going to be pretty long, so I made the sheath for your knife in a totally separate video. I'll be posting it later. Check that out. It's got this nylon belt loop carry so that it can pivot. Some people call that a dangler. It's got straps on there. If you want to put it on a pack, you can just fold this all out of the way. Run your straps through there, carry it on a pack. It's got a compass in there. But remember, for, before the compass will work, you got to take the knife out, though. Don't forget that. Or you'll be lost for sure, bud. I almost forgot, I was going to tell you Alex, the, the reason I made this sheath like this, recessed on the sides, is not just for looks. Let's say you're doing some hunting or fishing or trapping or something, you need to take some cordage with you. That's what this is for. This will let you wind some cord up on there, take with you. Maybe some braided fishing line, some snare line, something like that. Anyway, you could take a whole bunch of cordage, it won't slip off. We might want to go outside and do a little testing. What do you think? I think that is a wrap. That is one cool little knife, cool little sheath. I had a blast making it.